Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to continue our chapter 10 notes with section 10.2 about liquids. So when we think about liquids, we think about things we learned in elementary school. Liquids have a definite volume. They have an indefinite shape. Their particles are free-flowing, so they exhibit fluidity. I love that term. They are a condensed state of matter compared to gases and they have a higher density. They are relatively incompressible, that means you can't squish them in general, and they have the ability to diffuse and um, do so fairly readily, and they exhibit surface tension. So here is an example of a liquid behaving in a fluid-like manner. And here is an example of a container of what appears to be water um, with green and blue food coloring mixing together. So surface tension is, by definition, a force that tends to pull adjacent parts of a liquid's surface together, uh, thereby decreasing the surface area to the smallest possible size. It is a function of intermolecular forces of attraction and again it's what will cause bugs and leaves to walk on water in the case of bugs or for leaves to float on water hopefully leaves aren't walking on water but who really knows and it also is what causes droplets to form so here is a little water walker and here is ye old droplet capillary action is something that has a relationship to surface tension and the definition is it's the attraction of the surface of a liquid to the surface of a solid. Uh, again it's related to surface tension and it's responsible for the meniscus that we see when we put a liquid into a column like a graduated cylinder. It's also what causes uh, water to be able to flow in plants in your xylem and your phloem, and uh, also for why paper products can absorb water. So here is my plant example. Xylem is capillary action in the upward direction, and I guess phloem is the downward direction. Botany's not my thing. And then this is a graduated cylinder showing the so-called meniscus. So when we're talking about capillary action, sometimes we can take advantage of that to separate liquids according to how much they are attracted to a particular solid. So at the junior high, you may have done paper chromatography using plant pigments, and later this year, when we get to solutions, we will hopefully have a chance to do that. And again, this is an example of paper chromatography separating out uh, colors uh, according to a, the affinity for the paper, and B, often the molecular mass of the particular dyes involved. And this is what that would look like on a real strip of chromatography paper. Um, vaporization is another term we think about when we think about liquids. And by definition, it's the term that's used for the conversion of a liquid to a gas or vapor below its boiling point. So again, it's the general term that we use for the escape of molecules from a liquid to a gas, and it can happen in an open or a closed container. So here you're seeing vaporization over what appears to be a pond of some sort. So again, when we talk about at the surface only, we would talk about evaporation. Um, vaporization, as I said, is that general term that when you see a puddle getting smaller and you know that the water is evaporating, that is not <clears throat> in a boiling liquid. So anytime it's below the boiling point of the liquid, it's called vaporization. Evaporation is more specific. It's the process by which particles escape from the surface of a non-boiling liquid and enter the gas state. And so when we talk about evaporation, we talk about it taking place only at the surface. And again, this is an example from our old water cycle stuff. So again, at the surface, we refer to that vaporization process more specifically as evaporation. 
So vapor pressure is the term that we use for the pressure of a gas over its liquid. So when you have a liquid, there's always some amount of particles that are escaping to the gas phase. How does that happen? They're absorbing energy from the surroundings. They get enough energy to go from the liquid phase to the gas phase. Again, vaporization that's occurring because they have enough kinetic energy to overcome whatever intermolecular forces of attraction are at play. And that results in a pressure of that vapor. So again, the particles are entering the vapor phase. Some of them may condense back, uh, particularly in a closed container. And again, when you think about any time you open a can or bottle of soda and you hear that sound, that is the vapor pressure that has built up over the surface of the liquid escaping. And there's my Coca-Cola. So that is all I really wanted to say at this point about liquids. Stay tuned for section 10.3 notes soon. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.